Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Hot Seat, a wireless design and development interview series where we talk about the latest wireless technologies, components, and design issues for the wireless design engineering community. Today we would like to welcome back Bill Conley, the M2M Business Development Manager at B&B Electronics. With over 30 years of experience in the wireless field as an embedded design engineer that specializes in the digital, microcontroller, and microprocessor arenas, Bill was the first Aerocom certified wireless design engineer. He was also the first RF wireless certified design engineer for MacStream and Digi. Bill has designed supervisory control and design acquisition and telemetry solutions for remote monitoring and control for 20 years, earning the most innovative product for one of the first wireless mobile MDTs at Land Mobile Expo and Best of Wireless Telemetry at Sensors Expo back in 2002. Bill is also an author and speaker holding several patents in the industrial wireless field. He is currently serving as a TIA delegate to 1M2M, which is a standards body that launched in July 2012 to develop specifications to ensure the global functionality of M2M. Today, Bill will be discussing ways to simplify the cellular certification process for M2M cellular devices, a topic he covered during a 1M2M panel discussion at the recent M2M Evolution Conference in Las Vegas. Welcome back to the Hot Seat, Bill. Why don't you start the conversation by providing us a brief overview of what you will be discussing with us today, and then I'll ask you questions as you proceed with your slideshow. Okay, thank you, Megan. Um, I appreciate the invite back. Um, the, the presentation or the overview that I'm going over today is the um, process for certifying a cellular product within North America. Uh, that is a, a product certification uh, for um, all four carriers, which is AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, and T-Mobile. So then, can you discuss why device certification is complex for OEMs? Yeah, and, and just so we're clear, um, uh, OEM can mean the same thing as a manufacturer. So anyone manufacturing a product within North America are required to get certification. Uh, and, and the product certification is much more than a government regulation like the FCC. Uh, the process typically goes, um, uh, goes like this. Uh, you build a product, you go through a lab sometimes to, to, to qualify your product, then it goes to FCC. From FCC, there's two governing boards for AT&T and um, uh, T-Mobile, which is uh, called PTCRB and CTIA. You apply with them, um, and then if, you, if you're granted uh, certification through them, you'll move forward to, in the case of T-Mobile, there's nothing more to do. In the case of AT&T, you're required to go through uh, another process. Sprint and Verizon are completely different. So what are the main solutions to make device certification simpler for OEMs? Well, the desire, what I've been pushing for and the desire is to simplify things greatly. Um, I'm a member of 1M2M and the TIA, I'm a delegate, and what I've been uh, advocating for is one uh, collaboration center for everyone manufacturing uh, an M2M cellular device to be certified through that collaboration center. Uh, of course, the carriers would have to agree to it, but basically what it would uh, look like is anyone joining uh, a standards body like TIA or uh, through 1M to M can, can participate in this by sending their product to the collaboration center, have certified within weeks instead of months and sometimes years, and would spend a nominal fee, and I'm advocating no fee to be honest with you, I'm advocating that it's free it gets paid through their, their membership through the standards bodies. And uh, that would, that's how the process would work. And why is it important to simplify the rebranding process for already certified cellular devices? The rebranding is somewhat, uh, is somewhat uh, cumbersome. It's not necessarily complex. So if I were to take a product that I just got finished certifying through the process. And by the way, it is expensive. It can cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 to $150,000 to certify a product in North America that may or may not include all the carriers. But the rebranding piece of it would basically be um, I just finished a, uh, uh, creating a product. It's certified. And now I have a third-party company that desires to put their name on the box. Now, mind you, they're not changing any of the hardware, any of the software. There's nothing functionally changed. It's simply a label or a part number change. 
they would be then required, or I would as the manufacturer be required, to resubmit the product through the exact same process as if it was brand new, and you, you cross your fingers that you're given a waiver uh, by, the, by PTCRB, CTIA, or the individual carriers. So it can be very costly. And can you describe the steps that need to be taken to establish an industry-supported collaboration center that will help prove device and system concepts? Sure. I, I somewhat went over that earlier. So, and what I'm desiring or what I would like to advocate in pushing forward again would be a collaboration center that would allow, um, that, that everyone would agree on. Basically, the, the carriers would say, yes, this meets our needs. Uh, the collaboration center would be the focal point for, for all manufacturers producing cellular products to, sub to submit their products within that collaboration center to have approved. Once it's certified in that lab, then all the carriers uh, agree to accept, and, uh, to accept the product to be placed on their network. What happens if they don't agree with each other? What are the, what are the steps after that then to help get everybody on the same page? We're assuming a lot here. Um, th this is going to be an uphill process. Uh, it do it's going to require some negotiation. It's going to require uh, it's going to require the TIA or uh, a standards body like the TIA through 1M to M uh, to to keep pushing this, to keep advocating uh, changes. Uh, if they don't, then we're stuck where we're at. Where we're at now. And there is, is there anything else, Bill, that you would like to add to the conversation that you think is important for our viewers to know, especially when it comes to um, 1M, 2M and the goals that that collaboration has? So it's important to understand that when you're going through this process, it's almost impossible to predict how long it's going to take you to get through the process. It's going to be impossible to predict um, uh, the cost. We can only estimate. I can tell you uh, there's been numbers all the way from thirty to a hundred thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollars that people have spent trying to get products certified. In some cases, they didn't succeed. What in order for because uh, M to M is growing so fast and because uh, cellular is a big piece of that, it's extremely important that everyone get on the same page on how to certify these products. I get that the that the carriers are trying to protect their networks, but there has to be there has to be some meeting of the minds on how this is done. My recommendation: get involved. Those manufacturers that want to want a say so in and how the the process works is join one to MDM. It doesn't have to necessarily be through the TIA. I'm, I happen to be a member of the TIA. It can be through any standards organization uh, that's listed on one m uh, one dot org. Get involved and make this happen. Is there any other advice that you can give people um, who want to get involved on where to go besides the website that you just presented to us? Is there is there any other um, way that they can get involved? Like who else they can contact or reach? One uh, M to M. I've been I've been advocating through One M to M. So it's it's basically the only uh, the avenue that I know of right now that's push that's basically pushing this. The TIA has uh, has some interest in making this move forward. Um, other than that, the only avenue an individual have is the exact same process that we have today. Uh, those individual carriers, those individual uh, certification uh, process elements like PTCRB or C, uh, CTIA, and and a relationship with a lab that doesn't doesn't really uh, get you through the entire process. That's that's the alternative we have. I would like to thank you, Bill, for joining us once again on WDD's Hot Seat and sharing your slide presentation on how to simplify cellular certification. To view Bill's earlier discussion on wireless sensor networks for harsh environments and to read his column, Besides Device Interoperability, What Else Should M2M Demand? Click the links below. Until then, I'm Megan Zimba, and I'll see you next time in the Hot Seat.